Now, with our competition, with our keyword, Anthony of Victor Harbour. Hello, Anthony. Good evening, Peter, and uh, good choice of music. <laughs> yes, I haven't heard that in a long time. I don't know which film it's from. Not Blue Hawaii. It might be Blue Hawaii, I don't know. No, because you were the judge of the uh, Victor Harbour Elvis uh, Festival, and I won it. Well, is that you? <laughs> there you go. I remember that in a, in a tent. <laughs> In the tent. That's right, at the uh, town square, Victor. With the mayor now lost to the mists of time. Yes, John... Um, mm. Yes, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. remember well, his name. There we are, Mayor John. <laughs> um, Anthony, what's the key word? And you can go to the cabaret festival. Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar. <laughs> she, where was she from? I'm, I've forgotten. She was sort of Slavic herself, I think. Okay. So... Germany. She might, uh, perhaps, Deutschland. Oh, she, yeah, perhaps she was German. Mm. She was good looking. But that's where it bended. Oh, Not okay. the greatest actress. Thank you, Anthony. Enjoy the Thank cabaret you, Peter. Much appreciated. on us. Thank you. So I remember that, uh, that Elvis competition. Hmm. For various reasons. Uh, Austrian born. Yes, we were close. There we are. Now, Paul Kerner, who's a great communicator and is a lecturer at the Adelaide Planetarium, is in, and he's a, f a friend of the stars. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Peter. Now, this is big. This is the transit of Venus, uh, Wednesday the 6th, Wednesday week. Now, this is very rare, isn't it? Mm, extremely rare. We have uh, a transit of Venus uh, we have two eight years apart, mm -hmm. and then, then there's over a hundred years gap. Mm. So we won't actually, no one alive today mm -hmm. will see another transit of Venus in their lifetime, nor their children's lifetimes. So this is the last so chance how, to witness such an, an event. So how, it's a hundred and how many years apart? hundred and five and a half to the next one, and then there'll be two eight years apart. But there could be a three, four-year-old child who sees it now. As long as they live to over a hundred and, uh, what, about a hundred and eight or nine? Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll see it. So it's, 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 and people are living longer and That's longer. right, they are, yeah. I mean, I don't mean to haggle. I don't think it's going to be you or I, Paul. I don't think I'm going to quite make it. I'd like to make you it, but I don't me, think I, I will. Yeah. No, I don't think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Elk, for example, who's having a baby, uh, she could say, uh, you know, that you saw it in the year 2000. That's right. Which might, might seem so hokey, the year 2012, when they're looking back at this in a hundred years' time. It will seem hokey, time. I'm sure, yeah. Mm. Now, this, importantly, we associate it with the history of Australia because it brought... Lieutenant, as he was then, James Cook, to Australia, didn't it? The Correct, was in 1769, yeah. Uh, James Cook was uh, trained in astronomy to observe the, uh, mm. the transit, and uh, he had another uh, astronomer on board. I'm just trying to think of his name, Charles Green or something, I think it was. Mm. And uh, the reason we were so interested in this was to be able to establish the size of the the uh, you know uh, of the solar system, mm. and basically by being able to uh, time the transit, the mm. the movement of Venus across the face of the sun, mm -hmm. they were able to greatly uh, have a greater understanding of the distance uh, involved between the uh, the sun and and uh, the Earth. And why are the antipodes antipodes a box seat for this? <clears throat> Uh, well, you know, it just depends on the position of, of uh, Venus and the Earth. They have to be... Mm -hmm. We don't have a transit every time Venus goes around the Sun because of the, the inclination of Venus's uh, orbit, basically. Right, and mm -hmm. this time it's, it's good it's for us. It's positioned in the right ah. spot. It'll be basically... Uh, they'll, it's, they'll see it in, at sunset in, in the US, and, mm -hmm. uh, but we're perfectly positioned in Australia and New Zealand to see it from mm -hmm. the morning. And it's from Adelaide, it starts at uh, 7.46 mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and goes through to about quarter past two. And so it's Venus crossing the sun? Uh, Venus, uh, you'll see the disk of Venus mm -hmm. moving across the face of the sun. Now, one thing yes. I'd like, like to stress mm -hmm. is it is not safe to look at the sun. No, of course not. So you have to use projection uh, methods. You could use a pinhole camera. Mm -hmm. But we are um, having a, uh, a viewing at the Festival Theatre the, with the Astronomical Society yes. of South Australia. So, And we'll have special filters oh. set up on telescopes that will make it safe to be able to see the transit. Now, this will be on the plaza, will it? Yep, correct. Yes. This is next, weather permitting, next weather Wednesday. Weather permitting, yes. Yep. All day. Uh, yeah, well, there'll be astronomers set up there pretty well by 7.30am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, if the weather's uh, good, mm -hmm. you know, we'll be there until uh, quarter past two. And, and it's a better way to see it. It's a safer way, on I think, of seeing it. On a screen? On a screen or through a telescope. 
We'll have filters on but, telescopes as well. But your ordinary telescope is not safe either. Your ordinary telescope you can use. You can mm. aim it towards the sun. You can project the sun on a wall or on a piece of uh, white sheet. Mm. Uh, it's safe to do that. But oh, the problem see, with yeah. that is mm. you definitely don't look through the eyepiece. Mm. Uh, the other problem is the eyepiece will become very, very hot. Mm. So you need to be conscious oh, of that, really? that you, you don't have mm. the, uh, the telescope aimed towards the sun for too long. Mm. And... It'll be, is it, it's a dot, the dot of Venus travelling It'll across. be a tiny dot. Mm. You know, with the pinhole projection method like uh, the box camera type yes. uh, set up, uh, it will be hard to pick up. So a telescope or binoculars are an advantage. Mm. But again, I want to stress to your listeners, don't look directly at the sun. It's not safe. You have to use a projection method or you have to have the right filters. How did James Cook manage? I've got no idea. I, I would assume that uh, they were using a projection method at the time. Mm. Yeah. Like a camera obscura sort of thing. Well, no, I think they would have pro- been projecting it onto a screen. Mm. Yeah. A sheet. Uh, possibly, yeah. Mm. Mm. It's, f- it's very exciting, isn't it? Well, you know, it's something, as I said, we're not going to see in our lifetimes mm. again. It's, it is exciting, and mm. it's, uh, there have only been six of these actually watched by humankind. Mm. So uh, I think it's a very exciting thing to, and it's part of the natural world and the wider environment in w- which we live, and we tend to be losing that understanding of the mm. universe as a whole. Mm, we do. Mm. Is that because so much of it is apparent mm. at the press of a button, Paul? We can see a lot of this. Uh, that, that there's less mystery to it. As far as... Uh, Technologically. You mean, uh, yeah, to some degree. I mean, I, as I think I've discussed with you before, in the city now... We tend to rush home uh, from work mm. and get on the computers and look at that stuff on mm. computers. And we tend not to go out and look at the night sky like yeah. we once did. Yes. Where, uh, you know, when I, when I was a kid and I'm showing my age a bit now, they used to turn the street lights off at midnight yes. and you'd sit out yeah, in the quite. summer skies mm. and see stars. But now we have light pollution of the cities. Mm. And, and some people are concerned about crime, you know, going out at night mm. and sitting in a, a park or, you know, with telescopes. So I was all in, sorts of concerns. I was in New Zealand on a bus tour and off a ship and with some Americans and they said, oh, which way do we look for the Southern Cross? It was, this was during the day. Yep. But I was so embarrassed <laughs> that I had no idea. <laughs> And I know I I mean, I suppose in the night sky could have found it. Yeah. Well, if you come to the planetarium, I'll be mm, able to show you. I feel guilty I haven't <laughs> been to see you there. I keep promising that. Don't look at it with the naked eye or through your telescope. Uh, this is this. It's important to say this. I hope schools are picking up on this because it's during the day. Mm, mm. W- will it get dark or it's no, not that big? No, no, no. It's a t- it'll be a tiny little dot. It's not like Keep an in eclipse. mind, not like an eclipse. Keep in mind, uh, Venus can come close to the Earth, mm. but it's still at least 40 million kilometres away. That's oh, a long way. It is a long so, way. So, mm. you know, even though Venus is about 95% the Earth's diameter, very similar in size, mm. it is a lot smaller. Here's Matthew Byrne. Hello, Matthew Byrne. Good evening, gentlemen. You know, this makes me misty-eyed to think this won't be seen again because I still miss Halley's Comet. <laughs> Halley's Comet was, uh, yeah, every 76 years. So exactly. Can I, te- oh, can I tell you, <laughs> I had a, a gentleman in the planetarium uh, some years ago who saw Halley's Comet when it was last here in, oh, I don't know, in the early ni- 1910, around that mm-hmm. era, mm-hmm. and he actually witnessed both. Uh, he was well into his 90s, and he was very disappointed with the past we had in, I think it was about 86, the 1986. When we had Halley's Comet. Yeah, he said it was a lot better back in the uh, D- early well, century. Didn't you see it in 86, Matthew? No, you know, it, it was just one of those things. You know, the thing that gets me about astronomers, and, and look, you guys do an incredible job following these things for us, and that's mm. what you do. You observe the universe <clears> for us. Is that a lot of times it happens at four o'clock in the morning with an easterly wind over the horizon? You know, you, you could stand there all night looking for it, but so this will actually be in the daytime. So it'll be a small dot, mm. but a memorable one. Well, so. yeah, exactly, and very important in in that it, it's so rare. Can I can I also say we had a lady ring up one time. And she was very annoyed when we had the solar eclipse back in, I think it was 2002. Mm. And she said, why can't you astronomers always, you know, why do they have to be through the week or at night? Or you know, <laughs> why can't you plan them on a weekend when everyone's free? <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Matt Byrne. There we are. So the best to go to the Festival Centre Plaza or arrange, uh, arrange a way of projecting it, really. Mm. No doubt that it'll be in the paper how to make a pinhole camera, yeah, which is so. not that difficult, is it? No. 
Very mm. easy. Mm. And the best time to view it, do you think, early in the morning? Uh, I think, personally, it's nice to see it once it's moved onto the disc of the sun. Yeah. So I think uh, 9, 10, or probably around 10 a.m. will be quite good. And then it's all over at 2 o'clock. Uh, all over by quarter past two, quarter yeah. Quarter past two. You're also giving uh, one of your sessions, Aboriginal Skies, on Saturday the 30th of June, Paul. Correct. Yep. At the Adelaide Planetarium at yep. Mawson Lakes. And people can book through the planetarium if they're interested in sure. that. Sure. Yep. And by all accounts, a fascinating place. And Paul does a great job. You're a good communicator, Paul. Thank you. And uh, I wish you well with this. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm sure you'll get good attendance there at the plaza of the festival. Sent, uh, now, you can't look at it with a welding mask. Definitely you? not. No, no, don't no. use welding glass. Um, it's, uh, we don't consider it safe. You have to have the proper filters. Mm, quite. Uh, there you are.